In the Night of the Hunter, Charles Lawton's use of lighting helps bring greater meaning and symbolism to the battle of good and evil in the film. According to the Turner Classic Movies article by Glenn Erickson, although Lawton was a famous actor, this was Lawton's only film, and it was not received well due to its mature content and taboo topics for the 1950s. It was rediscovered and then appreciated as a masterpiece later on. Charles Lawton's biographer, Simon Callow, brings up in a new interview that Lawton's advocacy of equality for homosexuals inspired the commentary on an old-time religious hypocrisy. The film was made in the 1950s, however it represents the Great Depression in Ohio, and audiences in the 50s were not familiar with seeing orphans begging for food. These more challenging and controversial themes make for a darker movie, especially for its time, and Charles Lawton called it a nightmarish fairy tale. Not only were the themes more advanced and edgy for the 50s, but the fact that Lawton shot the film in black and white instead of color and used a helicopter to shoot some of the scenes added to the unique cinematography of the film that was pretty unusual for the 50s, Erickson wrote in his article. Lawton's films have been compared to D.W. Griffith's silent films as they both contain farm scenes and the iconic actress Lillian Gash. Also, in Tim Dirk's article for AMC, he compares Night of the Hunter to Stanley Cortez's black and white photography and Orson Welles' The Magnificent Ambersons. Both movies use deep shadows to convey more meaning than can be said verbally. Stanley Cortez was the cinematographer for The Night of the Hunter, and he said, Apart from The Magnificent Ambersons, the most exciting experience I have had in the cinema was with Charles Lawton on The Night of the Hunter. Every day I consider something new about light that incredible thing that can't be described. Of the directors I've worked with, only two have understood it, Orson Welles and Charles Lawton. Obviously, if the cinematographer Cortez believed in Lawton's skill with lighting, is it important to evaluate its use in driving the symbolism of good and evil in the movie? First, looking at movies describes cinematography as a process of capturing moving images on film or a digital storage device. Specifically, in the umbrella of cinematography, The Night of the Hunter values lighting. One of the most famous lighting systems is the three-point lighting system. Three-point lighting system is composed of key light, fill light, and backlight. Key light is the main source of light, which creates hard shadows. The fill light is on the opposite side of the camera from the key light and adds depth to shadows. Backlight is behind the subject which allows the cinematographer to adjust lighting ratio or the balance between key and fill lights. Let's see how this diagram plays out in the movie. The following scene makes use of low key lighting, when the ratio between bright light and deep shadow is very high. Notice how many shadows are in the following clip. In the film, Lawton employs direct lighting or a key light on Willa to highlight her innocent and naivety in the marriage. She almost has a halo or angel-like feature about her. She is the good in this struggle for good and evil. By illuminating half of Harry Powell's face with a fill light on one of his sides while leaving the other in deep shadow, the film emphasizes the inner struggle with Harry as he chooses between good and evil. Also, the lighting ironically forms a steeple shape in the room, again commentating on the hypocrisy of old-time religion in that era. Another scene that uses light to portray a deeper meaning of good versus evil is when John spots the preacher despite his escape down the river. The low-key light and deep shadows continue in the haunting scene where Harry is on his hunt for John and Pearl, who are on the run. Not only does the ominous performance of leaning on the everlasting arms clue in John to the evil preacher approaching, but the backlit silhouette clues us into the dark and evil nature of the preacher. The same silhouette is also seen when Harry is in front of Rachel's house. This repeated image and use of lighting helps remind the viewer of Harry's purpose in the film while maintaining the sense of fear for the psychotic preacher. Overall, the lighting leaves a memorable impression on the viewer. Lawton used this element well. Unfortunately, he was an unrecognized talent for his time. Still, generations can enjoy this film and feast their eyes on the meaningful lighting.